Hello, my friends. Welcome. We're going to start our spring witch. Today I'm using my favorite Super Sculpey Living Doll. This is a light color clay. This is Merelda. She is my swamp witch. The witch we're working on today is going to be a younger witch, part of Merelda's coven. Quite a bit taller than Merelda because Merelda is hunched up. If she was standing up straight, she'd be much taller. So we're going to start with the head. Again, this is going to be around a 1-6 scale, Barbie scale, or fashion scale. So I like to start with a somewhat skull shape and then build from that. So as I did in my Swamp Witch, Morelda, I'm going to do the same type of eyes. These are glass eyes made for like teddy bears or whatnot. We have two eyes ready to go. We're gonna insert the eyes. I want her to have petite nose. I always start my noses by doing a somewhat triangular shape off the face and then I add it in. And the start of her face. This one adds more shape to her face. Her jawline. I always like to put the ears in, even though most of the time the hair covers the ears. I am going to start blushing her a little bit. Next, I want to make her armature pretty much like I did with the Swamp Witch. With her head, add some clay in the middle. Just want to make her chest area in clay and also secure these wires. So we're going to give her a little pre-bake. What I like to do, this is floor wire, 26 gauge. So I'm gonna do a double strand of each wire for each finger. So what I need is 10 strands here. Two, four, six, eight, 10. So we have our five fingers. I'm gonna use cos clay for this, but cos clay is more flexible after it bakes. I don't need to have this wire armature in there, but right now when I'm making hands, it's easier for me to make hands that way. Some people can just make little snakes of clay, add them to like a wrist base and go from there. I just don't have the confidence in that yet. I don't trust the clay that it's gonna stay stuck to it. It just makes me feel better. So a good way to size hands if you want them to be somewhat to scale of the body is you take the head of your figure, you measure the palm from the chin to the top of the forehead. So if this is the palm of the hand, you measure chin to forehead area. And this would be the size. Now that's including this part of your hand. Some people have really long fingers, some people have really short hands. I have really short hands. We have our two hands ready to go. Right, friends, we have two hands. One's kind of in a position of holding onto something and one's just gonna be kind of relaxed. Elbows bent in approximate place. I can still move them around. Next, I wanna work on her chest area. Maybe she's gonna have some kind of off the shoulder or at least collarbone showed. Adding shape to her body just so when I put clothes on her, I have options. We have our girl started. We have her baked. First layer of like the makeup on her. I'm gonna work on her makeup some more and then we're gonna add some fabric to her. Soft pastels that I'm shaving off some color. I like to use pastels rather than paint on her face because I just think I can never get a smooth finish with paint. Sometimes I do use it, but I prefer pastels. Just some light wisps of eyebrows in there. I'm just using a watercolor pencil. When you're working with pastels, once you get the color you like, it's hard to layer on top. You can spray with a matte varnish, clear varnish, 
to set it and then you can continue working on it. You could use cutting batting to wrap your dolls if you need to add a layer or you could use like the bandages that you use. Medical bandages? What's that? Gauze. <laughs> Like the gauze wrap, you could use gauze wrap. No, I'm just giving her the bulk, nothing fancy. This is gonna be all covered. Gave her a little cover up and then we're gonna continue to wrap. Get her waist defined. So this is just old t-shirt material that I'm using. I just wanna bulk up basically where her hips would be. And I'm just gonna add some cotting batting to do that. Just so I'm not just like winding and winding and winding and winding with fabric. Her legs aren't gonna be shown. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do there yet with her legs. I like the t-shirt material because it's stretchy. So I've wrapped her basically to her knee area and gave her some hips, slight booty. I think I'm gonna wrap her arms next. I have some pretty lace here. And then I have some more beautiful lacy fabric I will use, but I also want her to have touches of pinks. So I think I want to take some of this lace. I want to see if I can blush it. Let's do a mixture of this red pastel and this more pinky pastel dry brush. We're going to mix it all together. That might be even too colorful. Let's mix in some white. Okay, let's see if I can color the fabric. I just want the dusty effect. Nice, okay, I think that's gonna work. I'm liking where that's going. Also, I want her to have some like bell sleeves, pink. So we have a start of her outfit so far, and I'm just using a mixture of hot glue and some tacky glue to faux sew her outfit. I want her to just be pretty. So what I want to do now is I want to work on her hair because that's going to decide her person. I was going back and forth between the color hair I want her to have. And I think we're going to go with blonde hair and maybe some touch of white highlights. Going to get my first layer of hair in and then I'll show you how it looks. Just gluing it on in little wefts. So it's kind of a messy process to begin with. I have not perfected not being messy with hair yet. It always ends up looking pretty good, so I'm not too worried about that. What I do is I glue in layers, a mixture of blonde and the white, just to give it highlights, and I just love how it looks. So I'm gonna continue with the hair, letting it dry between layers and building up as I go. If you're new to putting hair on your dolls, just go slow. Don't concern yourself with making it perfect. Get some glue that dries clear. Some people use if redoing dolls like Monster High dolls and such. Sometimes they use hot glue. Not my thing. You could. I just like to use the Aileen's Tacky Glue. For me, once it's dry, you can then stylize it. I always say, you know, figure it out what works for you. And if this messy way of doing it for me works, I'm going to continue to do it hasn't failed me yet. Some people can put it on like so neatly. They've been probably doing it for many, 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 many years of many dolls. Hair so far. We'll tame it down a little bit as the glue dries, but I'm going to add, I made some braids and I'd like to add those in her hair as well. I want to make some braids that kind of go around and pin back in the hair. So I have loosely, messily pinned back her hair just to get it started because I want her hair pinned back a little bit. So even though she's like a pretty witch, she's still a witch. I want her to be a little disheveled. It's going to be like this flower spring nature witch. She needs to have some flowers in her hair. So I have these. These are, I believe, for nail art. They're little dried flowers and I'm going to glue them in her hair Quite lovely. I want her to be self-standing, but I also want maybe to give her the option where she could sit. I'm gonna wrap it again with the cotton and then add a first layer of dress to it. So we have her started. Her dress also acts as the stand since I wired the dress. This is all wired. This is just the under dress. I can't think of the name right now, but that's the under layer of the dress, which also is the stand. I'm gonna take this other beautiful fabric and lay it over the top. 
So we have her dress all attached. She has like a train back here. And then this point, I'm actually, she's very pretty, but it's time to add greenery and foliage and flowers to her outfit. She cannot be just this gorgeous princess looking character. She needs to be one with nature. Some of you are gonna be like, ah, why? We're gonna add some greenery. That means she's gonna look like she's walking through the woods. She's probably gonna have things growing on her. First step is probably going to be adding moss. They belong to the same coven. This is so cute. So now you see, like she's just like short, hunched over lady. Here's her staff. The common thread, I guess you'd say, in this coven is that they all carry around lanterns in on their staffs or in some way. So I need to make, her name's Flora, guys. I know that's obvious, but her name is Flora and we have Meralda. And I need to make Flora a staff as well. Let's put Meralda to the side. My daughter picked me out some sticks. Let's see what works for her. We have the start of her lantern. And this is the point in time where some of you are gonna be like, whoa. She's a spring witch, kind of like Mother Nature. She has to help everything grow, and she has things growing on her. We're taking some of this foliage, we're putting it on her dress, and we're gonna cover it like she's been walking around in the forest, and things are just kind of growing on her. Also wanna have things growing out of her dress. Oh, this is so exciting. Dried flowers. Hi friends, it's the next day here. I'm gonna do what I can today. We are having a snowstorm. Power may go out or internet and I'm gonna try to upload tomorrow. I wanted to add some pink to her dress and I forgot to do that before. I'm just gonna add some pink to some flowers with the pastels just to bring down the pinks from the top. Don't go out, Power. Now I wanna add some more flowers. Ah! <laughs> so I'm gonna continue adding more flowers to her when well, the power goes off. <laughs> I also wanted to show you that I have some acrylic butterflies. I think they're gonna work just great. And I wanted to add butterfly to stick up here. I'm gonna continue with adding some more flowers and whatnot off camera. See how much I can get done before our power goes off again. I might add a little bit more little trinkets and stuff and I'll show you all the stuff when I come back. I was able to add some more little doodads. We added some butterflies to her staff, and then we added my son, my middle. He wanted to get credit for the idea of a ring on her finger. Got a little bit of multicolored ring on her finger. He picked blue, silver, and yellow little nail art beads. And then I added a satchel. She's collecting her flowers, and I also added, these can be like her little potion or herbal bottles. My son also wanted to say that he had the idea of the little silver doodad there. I think she's done. I think we're gonna call it, guys. I love how she turned out. I'm very happy with her. I'm gonna get some good photos of her. I wanted to do a photo shoot outside, but that's not gonna happen in the snow today. Well, it could, but I don't think it would go with the spring vibe. We'll let the glue dry. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this series, don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe and you can see what witch I make next. Let me know some ideas. Do we need to go summer or do we already have this because it's like a flower vibe? Should their next witch in the coven be an autumn witch? Let me know your suggestions. I think next I'm gonna be working on one of my miniature kits turned whimsical. That's my plan. And then I also need to work on the 80s house. I think I wanna do the girls room. I'm gonna let her fully dry. She's still got some wet spots. And then I'll clean up anything need to be cleaned up on her. And then we'll have a photo shoot. If you're interested, I do have a Patreon where I show some of the behind the scenes and progress of the projects I'm working on at only $2 a month. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you're warm and cozy where you are. And we'll see you next time. Stay tuned for the final results.